Salutations everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Sunless Sea. I'm your host, Brainboy20, and when we last left off, we were the Enterprise and Captain Pudero. And I believe we had just finished off getting the objective complete. Now we have to redo that. Alright, let me do that really quick, visiting the curator and making sure that... Oh, never mind. We're fine, and we have to shove off elsewhere. And now, why I'm not cancelling out these voyages like I started to do in the previous set is, I've, as I've previously explained, we don't actually know most of the map. And with the amount of fuel and food we still have, I am going to do a little bit of more of exploration. Just to see if I can happen to stumble across one of the areas we need, such as, uh... What was the Admiralty's objective for me this time around? It was Gator's Morn. Ugh. I doubt I'm going to find the Corsair's Forest this early on, at least with my exploration of Vendabite. Although hopefully with this I'll get enough funding to purchase the next tier ship, which will be big enough, cargo space-wise, where I should be able to get the Toon Colonist mission started. Admittedly, that might not be the case, but oh uh, well. I do intend to hopefully not be interrupted, as this is a very late night recording, and as a part of the promise I had made. Oh Christ, we're in the snares. <sighs> well, it's both lucky and not so. If we're in the snares, that means we're in a good chance for us to find the Ratteo and Pigalet story again. Which I think we're definitely going to get the rats to join us again, as I personally like the rats. Mm. That doesn't sit right with me. No, no. no. We're going to play Poudreau the way he politely had requested me to. I'm pretty much similar to myself. Don't sell souls. Be nice to others. And what of it? Also, uh, another gentleman by the name of Zorok Chaos brought to my attention that you can actually make a profit off of mushroom wine by selling it at Vendabite. And for, for those types of profit journeys, I would ask you, feel free to tell me them, but I will warn you that I'm not going to do them on screen. Anyway, uh, we'll explain this more after Pigmoat Island is over. Two houses, both alike in dignity. There is no habitation in sight, no market, only an old rotting dock. A stretch of sand thickens into damp black earth, from which sprout stunted palms? Not quite. Tall fungal growths with frond-like caps, as if someone had sculpted the idea of a tree from a mushroom. What awaits me? War! As you step onto the quay, you hear clamor, shouts, and shooting. You can see, off in the distance, smoke rising from beyond the hill, and dots of fires flecking the horizon. Two tiny figures stand a little further down the quay, unmoving, as of waiting your approach. Uh, the following is an extract from the popular Diary of a Sea Captain, from London to Irem and what we did there before we arrived, washed ashore on Mutton Island, and subsequently serialized in the unexpurgated gazette. The author's identity still remains unknown. The tale of Pigmoat Island. In which a delegation is made, a choice is presented, war is declared, a most singular treasure is sought by all, and a new empire is found with tooth and claw. Interesting. This didn't happen before. Chapter 1. The Delegation. The figures were rodents! To my left was a ratus faba, wearing goggles, a blacksmith's apron, and an assortment of tools. To my right, an unusually large guinea pig, wearing a helmet and a breastplate reminiscent of nothing so much as the high middle ages. The rat stepped forward first and bowed. Welcome, Captain, to Rat Star Island. I am Edgar, second chief engineer of the Third Rat Brigade. I invite you to avail yourself of food and fuel at our expense. The only cost to you is a choice. The rat stepped back. At precisely the same moment, with what appeared to be the ease of long habit, the guinea pig scuttled forward and made a declamatory chirp. Welcome, Captain, to the Isle of Caviar. I am Lady Augusta Devereux Swinch of the Blackwater Swinches, Seneschal to our King Graysnar. First of his name, I invite you to avail yourself of food and fuel at our expense. The only cost to you is a choice. The two stand at attention. 
looking at me expectantly. The two remarkable rodents sat, squatted, both seeking my support. I knew I'd choose carefully. And I kept forgetting that guinea pigs aren't actually pigs. So, um, hmm. I might as well hear about their stories first. I spoke to the chief engineer. His eyes had a wee wave of cold glint to them, and he wore his scars like jewels. A rat in the making. I asked the chief engineer to elaborate. He looked at me for a long, measured moment before speaking gruffly. We came to this island to make a home for ourselves away from London. It's cats and snuffers. It's ratskin suits. We came to live as citizens of our own republic. We came with our tools, our teeth, our clever hands, and we made a beautiful city by the light of the rat star that shone bright and blue on Mount Ararat. The chief engineer nodded towards the distant hill. One day we braved the depths of the chicken woods, and from the top of Mount Ararat we plucked the rat star to be our light, our beacon. But the pigs of Cavi saw the light, and they lusted for it. They sent armies to rule us and steal our star. We will not permit them to take what is ours. We will resist to our last breath. Will you join us in defeating them? Uh, that that kind of went uh, demonic there for a second. Excuse me, I need some water. I assume that's how a rat would sound. And that's precisely why I'm making that voice. Although it's not the f most fun. <laughs> a night out of habit. The seneschal cleared her throat with a delicacy to rival the duchess's own before speaking. Grace and all the king, our lord and sovereign, full seven months had sojourned on the sea, conquered this land and won the southern main. Now no fortress against him shall remain, no city walls be left for him to gain, save the rats that squeak behind the mountains. Unlike was the lamb of our deliverance, a sure our glories in their fall when our lady's eye be restored to our hall. The seneschal composed herself, and then added, We saw truth and beauty by the light of our lady's eye on Mount Caveat. But the rats, with their guns and their chatter and their peasants' politics, stole it from us. We will subjugate them and take it back. They are our rabble, and we will rule them with the steel-shod velvet of our paws. Will you join us? You know, honestly, I had heard enough more to make my choice. I believe we shall favor the Seneschal this time, because he never directly stated that he was for or against. He just didn't want to sell souls, is the only thing. And I'll honor that wish. I favored the Seneschal. Was it a charm, or her fo a fondness for a London's rat skin coat that swayed me? Perhaps a little of both. At any rate, I was keen to find out more about the civilization. I bowed to the seneschal, who purred with pleasure while the chief engineer gnashed his teeth, but kept his distance. You have chosen wisely, Captain, said the seneschal. Come, and I will explain our situation to you in greater detail. An occurrence, your memoirs, a night out of habit quality is now you choose the cavies. I've gained a supply and a fuel. The seneschal led me to the southern side of the island, skirting the chicken woods. We passed through a number of raised mounds of earth mixed with fortifying strips of mushroom flesh, which are supposed to be makeshift walls. The settlement was dazzling. The side of the island appeared to be absolutely wreathed in skin tarak. The cavies dwelling was awash with silver phosphorescence. It was a large colony. Most notable was the steam pinnace, the impossible lamb. They had run aground, from which the cavies came and went, bearing supplies. To the right of the ship, farther down the beach, a large group of cavies lay on bunch bundles of colored cloth, whining and wailing as if in pain. To the left of the ship was a ramshackle tent of poles and linen, in front of which guinea pigs clashed against each other and sharpened their teeth. In the center of the village was a covered dais, veritably festooned with colorful cloths and guarded by well-decorated knights. I suspected this is where the King Grayscar kept counsel. Be welcome, Captain, in the kingdom of Cavia, capital of our island, blessed by the light of Our Lady's eye. The Seneschal spoke solemnly, but with a hint of sadness to her words. 
Well, so it was, and shall be again. I will speak with our king and prepare your arrival. My page will show you the area and bring you in his sight, in sight of his splendor in good time. Page? A much smaller guinea pig. It's for braid with this slender strip of parabola linen. Scurried over and bowed. The seneschal took a leave. There was the hospital, the steam pinnace, the barracks, and we had seen enough. Let's visit the hospital. Were those guinea pigs quarantined? An elderly look, the Black Death, an elderly looking cavy greeted me, eyeing me gravely. Many of us sickened during the voyage, a rotting in our teeth, a weakness in the flesh. This isle was our salvation. The stronger among us made a pilgrimage towards the pool of Our Lady's Light, and then, miracle of miracles, they were cured. They bathed in her, they drank her sweet waters, and the strong brought the weak to her in turn. Soon we were thriving again, burying our children, raising them to love Our Lady's eye, and see in it our deliverance. The elder looked sorrowfully at the sick under his care. Since the rats stole her, the sickness has returned. All this light is but a mockery of hers, and we gain from it no benefit. The only thing. The elder's ears and voice flattened in a hiss. That helps our condition is the flesh, the very hearts and livers of the rats who stole her from us. Was this indeed the impossible lamb? Wasn't it reported overrun by rats? The page chittered when I expected the vessel. Rat! <coughs> I hate trying to do voices that are so highly pitched. Rats! Never! The splendor of Cavi overtook this vessel. I was born here, the first native of Cavia. But all our elders remembered the voyage. I was hard, they say, but we were harder. But the sea is black and unkind. We were lost in the dark for weeks, and no one speaks of those terrible times. But out of the darkness came the light of Our Lady's eye, guiding us here to our own isle. In times, we will ride the waves again. Perhaps once we have recovered our eye. Is it not splendid? I'm never doing that again. It certainly may have been at one time, but I could see that the hull has been severely damaged by the skin to lack reef. There was no way the cavies could hope to repair it themselves. Whatever the page said, they were stranded here. And the barracks. What chance could guinea pigs stand against the weapon might of the ratus faber? The page me led me to the barracks where the knights didn't deign to speak to one, so undercoated as I. The page, however, was eager to answer my questions. <sighs> Fine. The rats have no weapons! None to speak of. What is a gun without a bullet? A sword without a blade? Ours are the supplies, the knives, the soft stuffs, and the glory. The teeth are sharp, it is true, while well, ours... The page hesitated as the knights glowered at him. Ah, oh, sharper! All praise to the flowers of the house of Cavi! One knight preened, while another gruffed indifference, working a whetstone along its top front teeth. As I watched, a particularly vigorous swipe knocked a hole in scissor out of place, and that under the ground in a black and bloody mess. The knight gasped, grasped the tooth, and vanished from sight, and they glared in a way that dared me to make something of it. Adorable. I'd seen enough. It was time for my audience with the king. And the page led me, crouching at first, and then on my knees, before King Graysnar and Seneschal. The king was the largest guinea pig I had ever seen, easily twice the size of the largest knight in his retinue. The Seneschal... The Seneschal... <laughs> Tongue, are you done? Good. The seneschal looked positively dainty next to him. We are told, intoned the king, that you have promised your assistance to the house of Cavi. This is agreeable to us, but what form shall your assistance take? I had nothing to offer but my advice. I would not risk my crew on this potentially doomed venture. I offered to retrieve the lady's eye by force. I had guns, I had a boat, I planned to row a raiding party to the northern side of the island where the cavies could flank the rat's settlement. I had plotted to steal the eye with cunning. One should use shadows to catch a light. The rats would not even know we have been there. Probably. Go. A question of timing. 
I gave clear orders. My navigation was impeccable, but as soon as the rats manning the front lines were able to signal the settlement about our attack and keep the cavies busy for long enough, the chief engineer succeeded in rallying his troops into defensive maneuvers and made it impossible for us to set foot on their beach. I watched helplessly as the cavies that managed to run to make it to the settlement fell seemingly and in groups to the ruthless efficiency of the rats. The chief engineer in turn watched me and my crew while he instructed his fellows in setting cavy heads on pikes and parading them along the shore. Well, I gained five terror. Why not more? Oh, that worked. A perfect pincer. My plan succeeded brilliantly. I mean, the second time's only a charm. It was easy enough to sneak up on the settlement while the stolen eye gave off such light and cast such shadows around the shore. Even easier to do what needed to be done when the cavies were rallied by the sight of their treasure. What follows was a tremendous rout. Rats ripped apart, throats and bellies torn open, the scarer slicking the sand. The cavies took losses too, but soon the seneschal declared the day won, as it would with a substantial amount of skin to lack. I saw, to my surprise, that the cavies had spared a number of rat children, and rounding them up, I commented, commented favorably on those, praising the seneschal's high-minded mercy. The seneschal chittered pleasantly. My dear captain, be sure that we shall treat them very well, but it's hardly mercy that motivates the preservation of an enemy's livestock. A small rat wept quietly over a parent's severed torso before being prodded and pressed into a march. Yeah. I've gained full skin to lack. My current Pigmoot Isle civilization quality is now four troubled. And the spirit is now conflicted. And hail caviar. The rats were defeated. Caviar was triumphant. All that remained were the celebrations and the continuation of our voyage. Oh, how we feasted long into the night. Then... I invited one of the cavies to join us. They were reputed to be excellent swimmers, adorable enough to boost morale, and at times should become lean. I thought maybe a guinea pig stew would buy a crew a day or two before they started eating each other. Or I spoke up on behalf of the rats. The survivors were being treated poorly, but the rift did not seem entirely insurmountable. In time, they should be fine. For the wide, dark sea beckoned. We had eaten our fill, and our business was concluded. It was time to continue our voyage and see what other wonders and terrors still awaited us. We'll see what happens when we invite a cavy to join us. The seneschal, of course, couldn't abandon her duties, but she made it certain my request was cried out in the village square. The page squeaked excitedly and sought permission from her party to join. Uh, sought permission from her to join my party. I will record your doings for the glory of Cavi, he declared, and I'd like to see more of the world. I waited for him to gather up some effects and say goodbye to his family before lifting anchor and setting off. Let's at least speak on the rats. I appealed to the house of Cavi's grace and good breeding and praised King Gracegar, King Gracenar's magnanimity. Perhaps the rats knew not what they did in stealing the eye. Perhaps they were only stumbling about in the dark for a light, as the cavies were themselves while lost at sea. The seneschal and king exchanged a look. The seneschal murmured something in the king's ear, and he purred decisively. To err is, to err is marine. To forgive, Karin. He looked towards the chief engineer. If you will see it all right to our lady's eye and help us place it back in the pool of holy pilgrimage, and if you agree to terms of tribute... Trade, hissed the chief engineer. King Graysnot chattered his teeth, but the seneschal stepped forward and raised her voice. Perhaps further negotiation is, impos is possible. As we left, I saw the page timidly approaching in an albino rat to inquire about fishing nets. Oh, that's right, you can get an albino rat. I completely forgot about it. Oh well, they're optimistic now. I'm perfectly fine with this. To the wide, dark sea. The end. There. You finish your diary entry and the final morsels of delicious rat flesh. The cavies line up to salute you as you leave the victory banquet, escorting you to your ship through the foundations of their new kingdom. I have a port report of Pigmoat Island, a new nation has been founded, and the hunger quality has vanished. Um, I'm just taking a look through. I could purchase skin tobacco as well. How, what do I have in my hold? Enough space, but I don't think I can actually do anything with skin to lack yet.
Interesting. I'm surprised that's even an option to steal the lady's eye. I could always purchase skin to like as well. How much does it cost? 115. Let's not. Perhaps not. Let us actually go and leave with our new found supplies and our newfound Sinks Haven. Let us shove off and head back down to the Neath. Hopefully avoiding most of the more awful creatures. There's the Du Bois Maelstrom. Uh, doesn't really concern me that much. And before I forget again, or before I'm interrupted, I did mention that if anyone wishes to tell me about trade routes and other such things, feel free to do so. Note that these will always be done off screen, because, you know, I'm not going to have you sit through me doing all these trade routes and stuff like that. Maybe if I'm doing, like, an actual mission where I'm going to be traveling from, like, the Neath to the Vendabite, I might just purchase some and show you how the trade route works once, but not enough where it truly would matter. And this looks sketchy. There's a piece of island here that's actually really helpful. Why is there a rune? Tell me this is actually a place. We have enough supplies to pull this off. I wish to visit this area and see if there's an island here that I missed. No islands within range. That's literally just a bunch of... Okay. I don't understand why you would do that, but alright. Anyway, uh, we had the final daughter to speak with. A daughter. A uh, woman to speak with. Uh, freaking Hunter's Keep. Who did we speak with so far? Or are we just going down the list? Because I got Terror... Terror Reduction. And I'll have the ability to speak to them one more time, grabbing a little bit more supplies, and then just let the fuel build up as a result. And... Upon our return to London, I will most definitely end the video there, as time is definitely almost up. Anyway, Hunter's Keep. Uh, luncheon was with Lucy. Now it's luncheon with Phobe. Phobe is soft voice, watchful, unpredictable. Phobe is a story to tell of two lovers parted by water, of a raven that carried messages, of a fragment of the moon. She beats time on the table as she speaks, as if to a song only she can hear. The effect is hypnotic. Your attention drifts out through the skylight of the dining room to the false stars glittering in the roof of the cavern. You drift like a puffball spore. The undersea shimmers below. Islands like li lie like mineral specimens on black velvet. Ships bob like wood chips between the islands. Vast spinned things pulse in the depths. There is a scent like the scent before a coming storm. The storm? The storm came, said Phobe quietly. Everything changed. Somewhere in there, you finished the last course. The scowling maid reluctantly serves cheese and bath oliver biscuits. Lost five terror. Storm's attention now exists. I've gained a free supply. That's all here for now. And i got a memory of distant shores. My acquaintance with them has changed. Interesting. Please tell me the hold has all three. Tale of terror. Memory of distant shore. Curses. I'm missing just one. Just the one. Oh well. I'll find out there's some other means. As I really would like to continue with this. What was it? Memory of Distant Shore. Tale of Terror. What was the third? I honestly cannot recall. Hmm. We'll find one later. Something will take us far up north at some point, and that's where we'll hopefully find the... Hopefully we'll find the final tale that we need. Oh yes, I'm probably going to want to stick around and wait until something awaits me here, because whenever something awaits me here, that can only mean good things. And in the light of London, we shall pause and turn off the light. No! 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 I didn't mean to do that. 
All right. Inspection by the Ministry of Public Decency. Some things are a little too illegal for the custom service to admit the existence of. The ministries are here looking for those. You shrug. Nothing to hide. I invite them to search your ship as thoroughly as they would like. They leave scruff marks on the newly scrubbed deck and take great pleasure in tangling the rigging. They find nothing more dangerous than moldy ship's biscuit. That was very much my mistake. Anyway, um... Considering our current predicament of funding, and how we don't absolutely need funds anymore to carry on, and have a good idea of how to continue trade routes and such, I think we're just going to collect a message from the harbor master, and ignore the favor of the cheery man. He doesn't want to sell souls. He will not sell souls. All the clatter and song of the dark side, it soothes the soul. Are there messages for you? What's this? Let's see. That's all for now. I have a day of free evening. Something changed underneath and someone wants to sign on. Ah. A very fine evening to you, Captain. My, what you might call, mentor is very fond of adventurous Z captains. And you would like to offer what you might call a dispensation on account of she is so fond of Z captains. Behind the blind bruiser, on the dock, stands a tray piled high with fuel and supplies. Let's politely refuse. I will not deny that I am a little saddened, and I think my patron will also share my sadness. But I understand that you know your business, and that a sea captain is a free spirit. And I'll explain carefully to my patron that you mean no insult by refusing of his kind gift. Zail safe. The tray crakes off into the dockside crowds. We refuse the proposal. Ah, uh, yes, I need a Z-story. Z-stories can be found in Gator's Morn, of all places, so we definitely have to go there at some point. And one single echo. As far as echoes, or at least a coffee costs that little. Anyway, lamentable relics and outlandish artifacts. I don't need to really craft anything as of now, so let's get some favors at the aquarium. I'm not going to read this stuff again, as I don't feel like making any more voices, but we're definitely gra going to grab the echoes we've been looking for. No more lamentable relics, more echoes for me, but the memory of distant shore shall remain mine. Now, to London proper, and visit the Admiralty's office. Hunter's Keep gained a little bit of fuel and more favors, Admiralty. Quaker's Haven giving me more favors and fuel. Vanderbite. And, let's say, the Admiral now likes me. And, how does my hold look? Good enough. Pigmoat Isle. I'm not certain I heard you correctly. Are you certain that this is a report you wish to make? So be it. One fuel, favorous admirality, and they have a port aboard of Pigmoat Isle. And we don't have anything else for you here. Cruise the wolf stack docks. Huh. It's certainly strange. I could have sworn we had more funding than this. Then again, this is going to be a long build up considering most of our funds will have to go for purchasing the. purchasing the supplies to run this ship. But we'll eventually get there. Eventually. Anyway. Curse the Wolfstack docks? I don't see why not. Sea Shantix fine food, warmth of a pub fire, and something more. A likely lass. She tipsily claims to be a spy. Whatever she is, she's easy to like. And when the evening ends, you're still together. Next morning, she gives you a pewter locket. As you reach for it, she grips it briefly in her fist. Don't you dare forget me, she says. We could hire on some more crew, but that's what this new recruit contains. Ooh, ooh. We can engage the sigil ridden navigator, one of my favorites, or a gunnery officer. I'd probably very much like veils and mirrors and the sea. And the sigil ridden navigator is actually a fairly useful gentleman to have on. I let me guide your ship. 
I know all the Z, how it was, how it will be. Please, I... The headaches stop only when I'm working. Come aboard. Thank you. Ah, my god. The air. The air. It's clearer already. Let me chart a course for you. Ah, my head. My head. I'm sorry, Sly Navigator. You, you might be my first officer, usually, but people need to be replaced from time to time. Anyway, my lodgings... <laughs> Some my townhouse. That's a hilarious idea. No, we're not doing that. We're not going to retire, either. Hello, guinea pig, the mascot of pages. I lose one single point of hearts, gain two pages instead. Knock up some mirrors and veils over the one single mirror, and the slow navigator will be removed soon enough. Shops, skin to lack. Well, how much do you, like, cost to sell? Seventy per. I'm halfway tempted. I'm tempted. Yeah, this is probably for the best to ditch this all for my cargo. And with that, we're actually at a fairly decent amount of ca cash. But with that, I think we'll end the episode here. Hope you've all enjoyed watching. This has been BrainBoy20 with Let's Play Fall in London. And I am signing off. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like, comment, or subscribe for it upside a great deal. And I hope to see you all next time. Farewell.